When you're dealing with hardship, it can be easy for you to forget about God. We tend to get so wrapped up in our own lives that we can forget all about Him, but it's during the hard times that we need Him the most. 1 Samuel describes the hardship of Hannah, who was unable to bear children. To make matters worse, her husband's other wife had many children and constantly teased Hannah about her inability to have any. She would become so distraught that she would weep and refuse to eat. Her husband, Elkinah, tried to assure her that she didn't need children and that his love for her was enough, but that didn't stop Hannah from wanting a child. Every year, the family would travel to Shiloh to worship God there, and Hannah would pray for a son. 1 Samuel 1, 10 and 11 says, In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. It was only after saying this prayer that Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to her son Samuel. Hannah's infertility was a source of great pain for her, but once she got God involved, he answered her prayers and gave her the child she so dreamed of. Hannah could not solve her problems on her own, but God solved them for her. My friends, our problems are often bigger than us, but they are never bigger than God. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. The Greek translation for temptation can also mean testing. So God will never test or tempt you beyond what you can bear. The last part of this verse says that God will provide a way out so that you can endure it. This means that you cannot pass your tests or avoid your temptations with your own power. You must seek the Lord so that he can show you the way out. We often feel lost and alone when we go through hard times, but that is because we fail to go to the Lord with our problems. He is ready and waiting to comfort you and lead you away from suffering. We can often be like little children who think they know better than their parents. Picture a toddler trying to lift a brick. He won't be able to because he doesn't have the strength, but when he enlists the help of his mother or father, they can help him lift it. Humans tend to be too prideful to ask for help when we need it, but the longer we wait to ask for help, the longer we struggle on our own. We prolong our own suffering when we fail to get God involved. What does it mean to get God involved? There are multiple steps we can take to get God involved in our lives, and one of those steps is prayer. Like Hannah, we must put aside our pride and bend down to ask God for help. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. In the same way, those who never seek will never find, and those who never knock will never have the door open to them. God is waiting on the other side of the door, but if you refuse to knock on the door by praying to him and asking him for help, then that door will stay closed, and you will be left alone on the wrong side of it. When you knock on the door, and when you clasp your hands and say, Lord, I need your help, then you can be sure that he is listening. Even before God responds to your prayer, Simply speaking to him can remind you that he is there and that you are not alone. Daily prayer is an important way of getting God involved in your life, whether or not you are going through a hardship. When you become accustomed to speaking to God every day, when things are going well, it becomes easier to turn to him on those occasions when you really need his help. The reality is, friends, we need God every single day. Every day we face temptation and need God's help to endure Satan's attacks. Start your day with prayer and ask God to be with you throughout the day so that you can endure temptations. End your day in prayer, asking for forgiveness for any time you gave into temptation and ask him to continually be with you. When you are involved with God, you can be assured that he is involved in your life 
And when hard times threaten to drown you like a big wave, you will recognize his presence because he is with you every day. Don't forget to use prayer as an opportunity to give thanks to God for all that he has given you. It isn't fair to ask God for help and not thank him when he has delivered what you needed. Another way to get God involved in your life is to read your Bible. The Bible is full of wisdom on how to live your life for Christ, and it can be a great encouragement in times of trouble. When you are going through a hard time, it can be helpful to read the book of Job or Ruth to see evidence of God's goodness through trials. And if you are doubting God's love for you, you just need to read the New Testament to find evidence of his love through the sacrifice he made of his only son on the cross. Proverbs is full of wisdom on how to live a life for Christ, and we can see demonstrations of God's power throughout the Bible. It's not enough to simply pray to God for help. We need to have a relationship with him, and to do that, we need to know him. God gave us the Bible so that we could know him and learn to love him. Don't take this gift for granted, but spend time in the word to strengthen your faith. While it's important to have scheduled time with God every day, our interactions with him don't have to be limited. In fact, they shouldn't be. If you spend any time in nature, even if it's a quick walk through the park to get to somewhere else, take a moment to breathe in the air around you and be thankful for it. Remember that God gave you that air and the lungs to breathe it in. Without him, you would not exist. Look around and see the beauty of the world God placed us in. There's a lot of evil in this world, but there is plenty of beauty too. Soak in the sunshine, marvel at the leaves on the trees, and praise God for his blessings. God created you, the world, and everything in it. It all belongs to him. When we recognize God's role in our lives, we can dedicate ourselves to him and love him the best way we can. Embracing a God-loving community is another great way to keep God involved. When you surround yourself with like-minded people, they can help you keep your eyes on Christ. They will pray with you through hard times and remind you of God's love. Humans can only do so much for each other, but one of the greatest things we can do is point each other to God, who can do anything. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11 says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. God doesn't want us to suffer, which is why he sent his son to die on the cross so that we would receive eternal life through him. Until we enter the heavenly kingdom of heaven, we will endure pain on earth, but we can endure it because we know that it is only temporary and that God will help us through it. If we forget this fact, our Christian friends can remind us, and if you have a friend going through a hard time, you can remind them of God's love and help them to involve God in their life. When we fall, it is much easier to get back up with the help of God-fearing friends. We are called by God to help each other and support each other through Him. Getting God involved in our lives can be a rather simple matter if you are already living your life for him. When you keep God's commands and devote yourself to him, you accept that your life is not your own. Rather, you are living for God because you love him and want to do his will. When things go well, recognize God's hand in it. And when things don't, recognize God's hand in that too. God doesn't want to hurt you nor see you suffer. He wants to see you turn to him and accept his will, even if it doesn't align with ours. God sees the big picture, but we only see the sliver that is in front of us. If you don't get that promotion, pass that course, or marry that person, it is because that was not part of God's plan for your life. It can be hard to accept that, but when we are living for God, we are able to place him and his will in the foreground and our own desires in the background. Whatever your situation is, whether you've achieved your dreams or chucked them aside, whether you're happier than you've ever been or in the deepest despair of your life, remember that God is with you 
Keep him in your life during every moment and never forget that he is there. Keep praying, keep reading your Bible, keep your godly friends close, and live your life for him. With God on your side, there is nothing you can't do.